Okay, so we've done all of the rafter framing on our roof, and I wanna talk for a minute about what we had to do to get all of this stuff up here. So um, this big ridge beam up here is actually two pieces of something called microlam, and they're just sandwiched together. Uh, they're glued with subfloor glue and nailed in. It was really hard to nail that sucker in. It's like a laminated, plywoody type of thing. I don't know, it's really hard and our nail gun wouldn't shoot all the way into it. So we actually had to like pre-drill some of those holes and hand drive nails and countersink them. And it was kind of a big nightmare, but it was totally worth it because we countersunk the heads, uh, filled them with a little bit of wood filler putty stuff, uh, sanded it down. And then I was able to stain the whole beam uh, with the same stain that I used on these loft supports. Uh, so that should match really nicely. Um, again, I stained it only on three sides and it, you can probably see from here, I only stained it about two thirds of the way up because the rest will be in the roof. So why waste my time? Uh, so anyway, I stained that whole beam and then Kevin zipped it off to the correct length. Um, it came in, I don't know, 28 foot length or something like that. It was too long. So we double checked our measurements on the house. We measured all the way across on one side and on the other to make sure it was the same and zip that beam off so that it was exactly the same length so that we could get it up there. It is about a million pounds. So it took three people to um, feed it up to that loft far enough up that we could put it on the storage loft and feed it back over. So um, we'll do another video later about how exactly we figured out the roof pitches and how to cut these rafters because it's a little bit complicated. Um, it took me a while to wrap my brain around it. But so what's happening here is above my head here in the main living area, we have what's called a 12-12 roof. And that means for every 12 inches that we go over, we also go up 12 inches. So that's a really simple 45 degree angle here. But on the back, the dormer area, we wanted those walls to be raised up so we have a little more room in our bedroom and that makes that roof a 312 pitch which means for every 12 inches you go over you only go three inches up which I think makes that uh, end up being a 14 degree angle so um, it was a little weird because you maybe wouldn't do this on a big house but on this house since we have a height restriction both of those roofs share one ridge beam and they're gonna share a ridge cap when the metal roof goes over it. So we had to make that match up exactly. Um, and like I said, we'll do another video on the math of how exactly that works, but um, you bust out the good old Pythagorean theorem, A squared plus B squared equals C squared to figure out the length of those boards and how high that ridge beam has to sit up there. So uh, Mrs. Hoffman, if you're listening, I did use that. I know I told you I wouldn't, I did. Thank you, geometry teacher. Uh, but anyway, we before we could do the rafters, um, put them up there, we had to wedge that ridge beam up somehow so that we would have something to nail them to. So the way that we did that was we used A squared plus B squared equals C squared to figure out the length of the rafters. It also gave us the height of the top of that ridge beam. So then what we had to do was just subtract the height of the ridge beam, and that gave us uh, the height of a post, which you maybe can see in that back corner there that's gonna hold it up, that goes right up to the bottom of the ridge beam. So we just cut those, put them up there, and uh, we were able to sit that beam on it while we got some rafters up, nailed in, and got everything secured. So once we got one at the front, one at the back, and one in the middle, uh, the boys were able to just climb up there and zip right down the whole length of the house and just nail all those rafters in uh, and they all fit into place just great. So they are uh, nailed in at the top, just like kind of like this into the ridge beam and then they're toenail in. They're also nailed into the top plate of our walls here. And then we used uh, Simpson Materials Hurricane Ties. They, they kind of go around the board like this on the outside, so metal tie and that gets nailed in just to give them some extra help. Um, and then also over the top of the ridge beam, so from one rafter over the top of the ridge beam to the other rafter, uh, we used uh, 
another strong tie, Simpson strong tie, which is just like we did on the corners of the house. Uh, but these are 18 inches instead of whatever that was, 36 or something. Um, it just goes right over and nails in and just helps hold everything together really nicely. So uh, that's our roof. And the next step is to sheath it with plywood. And uh, once we do that, we'll be able to create this cheek wall right here and uh, have another rafter that comes out from that dormer. So it all has to go in the correct order. So sheathing first, then the cheek wall. So this is what the outside of our house looks like now that it's sheathed and the roof is framed up, all the rafters are up. Um, you might notice it looks a little bit funny because it has no windows. There are actually gonna be a lot of windows in this house, but we haven't cut them out of the sheathing yet just because um, it's the second week of October. We're just outside of St. Louis. Who knows what the weather is gonna be like here. Um, we think that winter is approaching fast, so we don't wanna cut them out. We don't have the windows to put in there yet. Um, they haven't come in. And also, before you put the windows, you have to tie back wrap the outside of the house. And we're not prepared to do that because we uh, don't know how fast the inside stuff is gonna go, electrical and plumbing and all that kind of good stuff. Um, and you're not supposed to leave your house Tyvek and un uh, for that long. Uh, so we're holding off on that. And we also think that if we wait to cut out the windows, it'll be a little bit of a wind block. So we'll get a little more time in this winter than we would otherwise. Uh, we can run a heater in there and kind of keep it a little bit toasty. So um, it kind of looks like a box. There are windows, I promise. Uh, there will be soon. So, um, but anyway, you can see from the outside here, all of the rafters have these little metal ties here. Those are those Simpson uh, hurricane ties, these little diamond shaped guys that kind of give it some support. They're nailed into the um, studs, the top plates of the walls, and then into the roof rafters. So everything's tied together nicely. You probably can also see the uh, strong ties, the strips going over one rafter, over the ridge beam into the next rafter. Those are all nailed in to keep those nice and snug. Um, you also notice up here, our ridge beam is, uh, probably looks a little bit funny from out here. That's because you, the only part of it that you'll see is the bottom part below the uh, lower part of the rafters where they meet up with it. So I didn't stain the whole thing. I stained the bottom and both sides about two thirds of the way up because I'm so lazy. Uh, if it's not showing in the house, I don't see why I need to spend any time on it. So um, it's stained on the bottom, but not on the top, but soon you won't see that at all. It'll all be in the ceiling. So um, also what you couldn't see from the inside is this 12-12 uh, roof kind of has a fascia board that gets carried down the side of the house, which is mostly cosmetic. Um, it will give this window that's going to be over here in our bathroom a little bit of extra protection from rain, but mostly it's just there to look pretty. Uh, so that fascia board will be carried all the way down there and there'll be a little strip of roofing just to look nice. And then on the back of the house, there will actually be two sets of fascia boards for the roof. So on the back, you'll have the dormer roof and then you'll have another little fascia board that is the front roof, that 12-12 roof. So it'll kind of look neat and sort of be dimensional. So I think that'll be really cool. Um, I think that's all we have to talk about this time. Uh, roof rafters are up. The next step is to sheathe the roof and uh, we'll sheathe from the front toward the back and then we'll be able to build that little cheek wall in between the dormer and the main part of the house and then continue on sheathing the back part with the dormer. And so that'll be our next video. Um, if you've liked these, please uh, give our videos a like and subscribe to our channel and you can keep up with us that way on YouTube. Uh, you can also check out our blog, our website, tinyhousephotographers.com and keep up with us there. Thanks.